When I'm holding up my head, when I'm counting every breath, Lord, all I need to know is you choose me. You choose me. I praise before. My song becomes my trial. I'll sing because I trust you. I'll bring my heart. I will lift my song. Yeah. The beautiful snow falling down outside. I'm glad you made it, I think. God is creating a perfect atmosphere tonight of encounter. Grace like new fallen snow. And if you're like me, you're aware of tumult around us. And I have to just declare that there's no place I'd rather be than with you here tonight. Not just summoned by a text or an email, but by the heart of the Father who knows you and knows me. And he summoned us here tonight. Just imagine if you're at work one night, you're a shepherd, you're hanging out in a field, you're with a bunch of sheep, like my only friends are a bunch of sheep, right? And you're just there, right? And an angel comes to you and it says they're struck with fear because the majesty of God, heaven rips open and this divine being all of a sudden is there and they're struck. And they, they proclaim this message. And it says that they start crying out, the heavenly hosts and the shepherds, they start crying, glory to God in the highest. I doubt they were like this. Glory to God in the highest, right? That's not how heaven worships. And if mass is heaven on earth, and if we're heaven people, brothers and sisters, it's time to worship like the heavenly host. Glory to God in the highest. Open your mouth and declare his praises. Tonight, when the King of kings and the Lord of lords, when heaven comes down here on this altar, do not worship with mute lips and quiet hearts, but worship with boldness and majesty. Oh, come, oh, come, amen, you will. Captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile until the sign of God appears. Rejoice, rejoice.
pray that the great power of the Holy Spirit that fell upon the apostles of Pentecost would fall like a new Pentecost right now upon the men and the women in this room who are hungry to advance your kingdom. Because the Spirit comes where he is wanted, where he is desired, where he is welcomed, and where he is adored. And so, Holy Spirit, we want you to advance the kingdom through us. We desire that you would advance the kingdom through us. And we will give you all the glory and adore you and you alone as you advance the kingdom through us. Take it all away. Take it all away. Take it all away. Do all that's left is you. Take it all away. Take it all away. Take it all away. This Sunday's Gospel is the announcement to Mary by the angel Gabriel. Mary, a young peasant girl in a backwater town, is told that she's been chosen by God to be the mother of his son. What an incredible thing it is to have the salvation of the whole human race depend upon the free will choice of that young peasant girl. How frightened do you think Mary was when the angel first appeared to her. So many times in Scripture, we hear Jesus say, do not be afraid. When we sense that the Lord is near us, the natural tendency is to be afraid. Afraid of what he might ask of us. Afraid that we are not capable of carrying out his wishes. Afraid of the hardships that so often accompany answering the call of the Lord in our lives. But like Mary, we need to overcome that fear by embracing God's will with faith and love. Mary's faith-filled consent to a plan that she barely understood is a model for us in accepting God's will in our lives. Sadly, too many Catholics today do not recognize God's will in their lives because it's too different from what they expect. Some people say yes to God's plan for them, but then they turn away from it when it becomes too tiring, too burdensome, too challenging. Our God is a God of surprises. We got a king born not in a palace, but in a manger. We got a king through a birth from a virgin. We got a king who called us not to overcome our enemies, but to overcome ourselves and our fear. In a few moments, I'm going to go up and bring the monstrance down here and bring Jesus in body, blood, soul, and divinity in front of you. Come forward. Tell him you're ready to answer his call in your life. Tell him you're ready to take up the challenge of being a true disciple, a disciple who is willing to fearlessly bring the faith to others, a disciple who's able to humbly walk with the Lord and accept his gentle prodding as you go about your daily lives. Because the result of allowing Jesus to surprise you is a life that, well, it may not always be easy, but it will always be oh so rewarding.